If you're hearing this, you're listening to the free public version of today's Talking Nerdy episode. For uncut, extended versions and lots of extra cool content, go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur to join our awesome nerdpreneur board. Now here's today's Talking Nerdy. Talking Nerdy. Just Talking Nerdy. With all this Talking Nerdy. Oh. I've been meaning to get back into running, and I just sort of did it yesterday, which was nice. But uh, it's always you. how it goes. It's like one day you just get to the point where it's like, all right, uh, from I'm going to go back and do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Exercise is one of those interesting things, too. I mean, so not to directly transition into our topic for today, but I feel like exercise is also one of those things that is super, a, ch- a very charged topic in the world of dating. Yeah, I think uh, you might be right. Uh, I f- it's one where I feel the values should be aligned. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes problematic and difficult. You know, like if one person, let's ground this in an example, but if one person is very active and loves working out, goes to the gym three to five times a week, and then the other person doesn't take care of their body at all, it's just hard to believe those two people will last long term but at the same time i don't know you know some people like that as a meditative private aspect where do you sit yeah no i i largely agree with you i think that having that that there is a way to strike a balance and i'm sure that the people who do it could give a little more insight but as far as the way i see it working is if someone likes to exercise for meditative purposes it's great but also some people you know they they appear fit already and for some folks it's the image it's the appearance that matters as opposed to the the value and priority of one's physical health um so i think there's some differences there it depends on what the purpose of exercise is like if it's just to look good then two people who think each other look good will be happy with or without the exercise but if it's actually about like physical health and that that dedication and discipline and ex- that goes into exercise, then I think, yeah, what you said, it's so important that the two people share that. Well, I think that there is so many side consequences to working out. Like, for example, um, I, I've gone on runs many a time with a said girlfriend or date or thing or someone like that, where... You know, I suggest, oh, let's go for a run together. Or they say sometimes, oh, let's go for a run. And uh, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I'm I'm a tall guy who has fairly long legs and I run (laughs) fairly quickly. I mean, I don't think I'm a fast runner. I think that I'm more like if you watch a giraffe running, (laughs) it's just going to go a lot faster and further than the average gazelle, you know? And so... This is why when I go out for a run and when I've done this multiple times with dates in the past, uh, I've often just had to kind of leave them <laughs> because oh, I, <laughs> and so I've gone on dates where they are like, I can't run or they, they can't keep up with me or they only run for like a kilometer and then give up. And then I keep running. And here's the thing. And here's the secret about running. If you're not a runner, running is a hundred percent mental toughness. It's not really that much about physical toughness. It's very much about mental toughness. And yeah, so running specifically is for sure. It, it just means that like, it's not easier, even though you might be fitter. It just gets easier because you're more used to it or you're more used to that mental game. And so I've gone on runs with girls before and uh, it's indicated to me where their level of mental toughness is. I think the side benefit of being mentally tough is actually just a really good benefit to all these other walks of life, right? Like being mentally tough in work, being mentally tough in your diet, being mentally tough in the way that you uh, deal with difficult situations and stress, right? So having mental toughness, it's not necessarily just about running. But if you can run, it often indicates to me that you have the mental toughness to like overcome rejection or, you know, deal with serious conversations where you have to be direct or really honest. And uh, 
I think that's really important in a relationship. So uh, does that resonate with you, Frank, in terms of how, how I'm talking about that? Because I know you run, right? No, I actually don't run, man. I, uh, I thought you were on a treadmill. You were just saying you were on a treadmill. <laughs> yeah, I do a treadmill to warm up. And if it's really rainy outside and uh, or or you know what, treadmills are really great if I've got a lot of like pent up frustration and I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to like huff it on this treadmill. The uh, um, yeah, I, I really resonate before I, I get to that. I have to correct you. I'm sorry. Something you said earlier. Giraffes are not going to run faster than a gazelle. And I oh, knew right. this and I had to look it up. Gazelle's average speed is 60 miles per hour. A giraffe's is they say average 37. So you but being I, a giraffe. I look more like the giraffe, though. That's all I'm you saying. You might run like Just a gazelle, lanky. but you look like a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I run like a gazelle. I think I might be this. I mean, uh, I, I think it's just that wide legged, knock kneed, ostrich. That giraffes give. Ostrich. Let's give you the ostrich <laughs> appearance because those motherfuckers are fast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I got the long neck too, maybe. <laughs> right. Do not look like an ostrich, but um, I, 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 I like the image now. Um, just Photoshop your head on top of an ostrich would be All right. would we'll kind wait. of make my day. I might have we'll, to do that. We'll wait for Twitter. Twitter will yeah. get, Twitter's on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as far as like that that discipline, I totally hear that, and and I do see that as well. But for me, it's more of the gym. You know, I like to go to the gym three to five times a week, and uh, being with someone that is similar is is very appealing. Mm -hmm. You know, doing it with your partner can be great. And I know for me, um, my partner right now, we have been going to the gym together and that's been a really great yeah, what's new, that like? new thing for, well, I, I, honestly, like I haven't gone to the gym in many, many years. Uh, that makes me sound like I'm really <laughs> fat or something like that. No, I, I've, I worked out at home. I did hot yoga for many years. I do a lot of things to, that are more, I just don't like going to gyms. Let's put it that way. Um, and so now you've when dusted came, off the dumbbells. Yeah, when she came around and she's like, let's go to the gym. She had these like 10 passes and we went to it. Most of the time, I just don't really like going uh, far away to work out. I like to just get it's hard enough to work out in my mind that if I can just get my shoes on or if I can just get the you know dumbbells that I have in my place up and start moving, then I'll, I'll complete my workout. But the hard part is just starting. Right. And so. When I when I when we actually started going to the gym, it did become this nice happenstance where she was off work for a few weeks because of this crazy thing that happened at her work that where they got hacked and the whole thing got shut down and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And because that happened, yeah, because that happened, they wound up uh, having like almost two to two and a half weeks off where we just went to the gym like three, four times a week and i didn't have to pay because she was just like oh here's another free pass another free pass and once you start going you kind of get into it and it became this kind of couple thing that was like oh it's nice and we feel good afterwards and then we go eat healthy together and it's like yeah these are all things that in my mind um i've not often had with a partner is that there's like this health alignment and I like that that has really been in alignment in terms of going to the gym together and you know she's making me better and then also I'm making her better in ways too so it's like I feel like you, you want to be with someone that makes you the best version of yourself, um, but not in like a toxic way of like, you suck, you need to work on all these things or nagging you to perfection, which is where I think if you're correcting your, your, your partner's form at the gym, you could see that leading down, a, down a way, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You touched really nicely on a, I think kind of the, the core of, of what, what this all makes me think of, which is you want that partner that is going to help you want to be your best self and to grow. And exercise is so important, not only because, you know, we're in a, a shallow and vain world to some extent and people want to look good, but also the health, the long term, you know, health benefits, the longevity, the good feeling of it. And and what we've been talking about, that mental discipline and fortitude that is is also grown through these kinds of activities that that translate very directly into success in life, in you know, family, career, passion projects, relationships, uh, you know, spirit, spirituality, mental growth, physical growth, like all those things are super, super related and tied together. And so being with someone that is encouraging of you growing in that way 
Yeah, and exercise is just such a good example of how it touches on all those things. If you're listening to our podcast and listening to us now, you're probably in that place where you do want to grow. You see something about us and our values that's appealing to you. And so, you know, personal growth and development is important. Setting goals and going after things, you know, being independent, starting your own business, having living life on your terms, those kind of things that Nerdpreneur kind of represents in terms of values. I, I imagine there's some resonance there between you, our listener, and what Frank and I talk about. And so my guess is that when you're looking for a partner or you're talking to people that you want to date, there, you want some level of resonance in that same way uh, just because you're ambitious. You know, you probably want an exceptional life, a higher uh, you want to have a life that is epic in some way, right? And maybe not something that is just average. Maybe you don't even like the word average. Maybe you don't even particularly think average is a good thing. Yeah, and it reminds me of something that we've kind of danced around just now is purpose. And I feel like purpose in a person is super attractive. And I think it's something that, you know, when you see it, uh, I mean, that's one of the reasons that people fall for those entrepreneurs that are like actually getting shit done and doing stuff. They see competence and they like it because yeah. competence complements purpose. I feel like I should put that on a shirt. Competence complements purpose. It's really so much of I know that when I'm really I know that when I appear attractive, it has a lot to do with I have a purpose that is not related to finding a partner. It is related to my own drive and my own goals. And, and someone sees that and they think that person's interesting. In fact, you see it on online dating apps. People will say on their profiles, hey, I'm looking for someone who's like passionate about something. I'm looking for someone who's doing stuff. And I'm looking for someone that can have a conversation and talk to me about what they're interested in. And that kind of purpose is the thing that this wife and husband situation, their purpose is clear. Hers is the family. His is his business and providing for his family. And so there they still find that attraction with each other. So I know we got on here to talk a little bit about dating app tips and you just hit one on the head as far as how to i'm not really escape. ready to leave where we are though no we're not leaving this i'm going to stick right to where you're talking about yeah. uh, because literally what you're talking about is the is being a high value man right and the idea of a high value man uh is you know what makes him appealing and you mentioned having a purpose right and so that is like you have to be going after something if you're a man and you want to be considered attractive. That's not the only thing, but that's one thing that can make you more attractive that is not based on going to the gym, that's not based on your ability to be funny, that's not based on, you know, what you wear or dress or how your photos look. But if you have a if you have a purpose, you have something you're going for that's bigger than just yourself and it shouldn't be like necessarily just money either, right? It's much more important to have like a mission of some sort that makes that you're going somewhere. The way I describe it is like you should be a rocket ship, okay? Hmm. And a rocket ship is going somewhere and it's going somewhere quickly. And if you have that energy of like, yo, I'm going here. And if you want on board of this rocket ship, then you better get my attention. Yeah. It's not so much like, oh, I'm not even looking for a girl. Like I'm focused on this over here. This is where I'm going. Yeah, that's interesting because there is a certain balance and there uh, the balance between focusing on one's purpose and also focusing on one's happiness. And very often they overlap, but I say happiness specifically for myself. I find that having fun with another person that's a partner uh, brings happiness. And my purpose also brings happiness, but a very different kind. It's more of a fulfillment happiness. And that is different. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do those things. I'm saying that on your Instagram profile and your dating profiles, you should come across as somebody who is kind of like a rocket ship. Mm. Because that's actually just a better model for dating um, if you want to attract. Because men now have to be the attractors, which is interesting. It's weird, right? Because it used to be the other way around. But a lot of times now, because of the way that this whole thing is flipped in the uh, dating app world, right? 
men have to now be marketers. They have to be very good at marketing themselves on an online dating app in order to be fed to the best prospective women. And if they don't have good marketing, even if, even if they are a high value man of all these different things that men, women want, if they don't have the right marketing, they're actually you know, misplaced. They're not going to get to where they want to go, which might be the ideal mate or somebody who really actually matches with them. Um, and so this is, what I think, why a lot of people get really frustrated with online dating apps, too, and finding the right person who's, who's you know, in alignment with them, because we just have a marketing problem for both sides. But men especially feel the brunt of it, because they're the ones who are trying to get women to swipe on them. And we don't often get the success that is, uh, that is indicative of the person that the person is. Yeah, it's interesting points about, you know, historically how women ver in in um probably 90s and and before, you know, women had to be the marketers in because men were doing all the work and there was societal standards and gender norms and all of that. But now I don't I'm not going to analyze why that is the way it is, but one of the it's interesting that you bring that up and one of the things I wanted to circle back to real quick was the idea of purpose. And if if someone's listening to this and they're thinking, purpose, gosh, that's a cool idea. How do I start? Where do I start? What are the steps? I just wanted to offer a suggestion of a book that really helped me. And it's not an intimidating read. It's a relatively new one, actually, called Hero on a Mission, uh, A Path to a Meaningful Life by Donald Miller. Donald Miller is a marketer and he's got a focus. He's got a, a, a background in writing scripts and stories and he's written a few screenplays. And then he transitioned all of that into the business world. He started his own business uh, and he kind of coined this concept called story brand. Mm -hmm. And it's the idea of, and you've probably heard of him, Chris, have, but it's, yeah. yeah, it's the idea that you take the concept of a story, the hero's journey and all of the archetypes that are in there and you put your customer in that but that that's his story brand on the point that i wanted to talk about is his book here on a mission it talks a lot about how you can find purpose and how important having purpose is in your life so he gives you tools he gives you tricks and he gives you the value of having purpose but he doesn't i don't know if he talked very much about purpose and how important that is in attracting a mate but it's definitely uh, a good overlap. And I highly recommend Hero on a Mission to anybody that, that is interested in it. It's like a 200-page book or something or less. Cool. And, uh, I mean, yeah, be reading somewhere is always also very attractive. So you could put that in your profile. Um, yeah, true. Books. I love books. That's currently I... reading. Currently reading. Story yeah. Books, you there know? you go. Just a thing. And uh, like little things like that that you can throw into a profile that show that you're a growing person, that you're engaged towards your goals. You know, reading Harry Potter right now doesn't resonate as well, but you will attract a certain type of person uh, versus, you know, reading story brand, building my brand, what all that kind of thing. Right. You're a rocket ship. Right. And so going somewhere is is the way you want to perceive it. And when we talk about purpose, like what could you even put? you know, ground, ground, ground this in some examples. But, you know, for example, we have a podcast, right? Uh, we're doing all right. We're growing. People are telling, telling people uh, every month's a little better. But, you know, what could we say about our purpose or what could we do to put your purpose into your profile, Frank? Let's see. Well, what you could be like, I'm changing the world through helping entrepreneurs, artists, creatives launch their passion, for example. Or yeah. you, you could you could say that right, and then throwing something in, it's like you know, creator of the nerdpreneur, co-creator of the nerdpreneur podcast, you know, ten thousand listeners strong or whatever it is, right? So it, it's kind of showing people that you got something, you're going for it, right? You're driven by something, you got a goal, and you're you're excited about it. You know, something that brings you excitement and passion that also is kind of you know, impacting the world in a positive way, because, you know, there are people out there that are, you know, tarantula breeders and, you know, uh, game designers and people who are following a passion. And when they turn that into a business or when they start moving the needle on something where they're like, I want to make this like a career, I want to make this something, you know, bigger than what it is. 
uh, than just a hobby, that can become really appealing to people of the opposite sex in, in certain cases because it shows you are willing to overcome adversity. You're willing to push through challenges. You have to be willing to get put yourself out there. You know. And yeah, and I also really, I also really like to see that when when I'm using the online dating platforms to see like, hey, this person is also interested in growing and they have their own projects. Like there was a woman I was talking to who was putting together her art exhibit for this live art gallery. And it became a really interesting conversation. And I, you know, it, that's, that's also a really nice thing about sharing what you're working on is, is it can become a talking point, a conversation starter. Cause you know, we all know that starting a conversation with a stranger isn't easy and it's even harder when it's over an app and you're like grasping at straws to find something to talk about, but both of you are doing it, so it doesn't really flow or gel anywhere. Um, that's why I think getting together for coffee as soon as possible is the best way to do it, because that caffeine is going to help you kick into gear and get excited. Oh, and that's another thing, excitement. Showing excitement, and if it's something that you're passionate about, it's easy to show excitement. But showing excitement in general is a really attractive quality. If you go into a conversation with a stranger and you're just kind of monotone, I found that that is like a surefire way for someone to think, wow, this person's really boring. But if you go in and your voice, your like intonation is like all over the register, it's kind of a roller coaster, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Like people can see and feel that excitement, and then they're they're kind of engaged, they're more engaged, and they're like, oh, this is interesting, this is entertaining, this is a fun time talking to this person, and that has helped me a lot once I recognized that and started to like turn up the excitement in my voice whenever I spoke to strangers. Yeah, enthusiasm sells and it's contagious. So, you know, being able yeah. to share enthusiasm and be able to do that as long as it feels genuine. I will just say that because <laughs> Are you trying to say I don't sound genuine? Sometimes. Um I, I think that I think that we all fall into the trap of like Oh, I got to be excited right now. But in fact, if you if you really do learn how to be authentically enthusiastic and excited about something, people can see it, then it becomes very endearing and that's that's a good thing. That's a good point. That that's a good point to back that up. And that's for me whenever I talk about Dungeons and Dragons, people can always see that excitement. And mm -hmm. thankfully that's usually usually genuine. Mm -hmm. So uh, what uh, what is your opening line, Frank, for people on an, a dating app? I'm curious. Do you uh, how do you how do you approach that? Hi. That's it. No. <laughs> but I definitely hear that that is an annoying thing that uh, women deal with. Or actually, I I deal. Sometimes I'll get that too. Someone will just say hi, and I'm like, bye. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hi, or uh, you know, how are you? Or you're I like cute. to, yeah, or... <laughs> yeah, right. I like to open with, um, you know, uh, a, a direct opener. I like to do, what are you doing this weekend? Like, what have, or what have you been up to? I kind of like to just ground it in something uh, factual. Rarely will it ever start off somewhere really, really deep. You know, mm -hmm. um, talking about uh, love languages or uh, attachment styles. Attachment styles is the is the current one, current trend right now. It seems. Hmm. Um, but yeah, having that grounded, specific kind of thing that's also going to tell me a bit about what they like to do is is how I like to open things up, and then eventually transition that into, oh, what are the things that you like to do on your free time? Because that tells me a lot about a person. If they like to sit and watch TV, that's not really the kind of person I'm looking to be with. I don't want to be with someone who's going to sit, watch TV, lounge, binge, like nonstop. Like, of course, we all like to have our downtime. But I ask those questions because it gives me a good idea of who they are. What about you? Well, when I was doing this, I had a, a number of different approaches to this. Um, you pulling up your uh, old documents, your yeah. list of questions? list of questions uh yeah. no like well and this is the thing right like i think there there is there's really a few different strategies that that work really well and then there's a few that people have that don't work very well one of them i think is uh hi how are you like for example the one that you obviously just talked about right uh does that work for everybody or do you, or do you get no response sometimes well online dating you're there's plenty of times you're gonna get like no response and there's few several reasons for what that could be but by the way i just want to preface like this discussion for our listeners 
Chris, you sound like you have this down to more of a science where I have some science to it, but more of a like, like general philosophy. Yeah, I definitely kind of have a science to it. Like online dating became a numbers game. What well, it is a numbers game, I should say, right? I mean, and so I want to preface this that, you know, there's no one, you know, do this once and it'll like work. But if you are putting in the time and effort to kind of do this, do the swiping and then get the matches and then like create kind of a system. Here's the thing. I see people sometimes say, Oh, I look at their profile and I pick out a custom message for them and try to highlight something. And it's like, I have found that doesn't improve your results at all. And I guess the main thing I always think about is results. And the result for me is about actually getting a response and then also that leading to a date eventually where I can actually meet them. And that's all I mean by results when I say that is that I increase the number of connections that I get. Thus, I also get the number of people up that I get to meet, thus increasing my odds to be able to find somebody I actually really like and resonate with and want to and want to spend more time with. The challenge is sometimes you work really hard as a guy for a, like a couple of weeks to get to know somebody and then eventually you meet them and then there's like no chemistry. And it's taken like two to three weeks of your time to get to that point of even meeting them. And you haven't really had a whole lot of other options because it's just really slow on the apps. And I just found that very frustrating. So I figured out a lot of things to make it more of a science and yes, very consistent um, ways in which to create those results are, are kind of what I'm talking about. I totally agree with the disappointment of like spending that time to get to know somebody. I mean, my philosophy around it now is just like get to the in-person meet as soon as possible. And there's a lot of women who generally feel the same way anyway. Well, yeah, exactly. So I mean, we can talk about how to get more swipes, uh, like yeses on the profile, because that's kind of step one. But if you want a few good opening lines, I can probably provide those as well. At least we were talking about that. I'll start with my philosophy on that. Yeah, let's do it. Um, the most effective stuff is things that actually put whoever's reading it on a bit of an emotional roller coaster and make them laugh usually is the best move. So I'll give you an example. You've probably seen this before. I got this from a place online. But if you have misspellings or autocorrects in your opening message, then it actually comes across great if it's really funny. So for example, um, one of the ones that I would say almost every single time got a response, almost every single time. And I'm not talking sometimes and I'm not talking, you know, I'm talking every single time almost that this in the many years that I used it worked. Um, and I got this online. This isn't my creation. This is something. And if you use this, you'll probably hear it other places because, you know, there is a chance somebody's heard it because it's out there on the Internet. But why are you so fucking cute, but so fucking fat? That's the first message. You're joking. Nope. No. And then, then, then you say, oh my God, far. I meant far in all caps. And then you send a crying emoji or a crying gif. And then you say, good job, Chris. You're an idiot. And let it sit. Holy crap. There is so, that is an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you get a response. Yes, of course. <laughs> the, the woman goes through, reads it, and is like, oh, my God, that's hilarious. I have to respond to this. And it's different than, hey, hi, who, you know, how's it going? You're cute. Like, all those things <laughs> that they normally get. This just gave them an emotional response. They, uh, they respond. And then you can start talking to them. Um, you know. Wow. You know, you no, also sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The just, I just can't get over that that this there's such layers to this yeah i'm kind of stunned but okay <laughs> let's move on let's move on let's move on yeah usually when i when i tell people that they're like how the what do you that's such a that's playing the game at a different level it really is it is and it's a little bit manipulative yeah but you know what the apps this are manipulative all of this is a game, sadly, and, and I, I try to play it the, as honestly the as possible. apps are a manipulative thing. Did any of us opt into this? No, but this is the society we live in, so we must be good at it. Anyway, that's my philosophy. Don't abuse this stuff, by the way. If you're, you know, be a, be a good dude. That's the most important thing. Um, another thing, it's like, you know, uh, 
you could say something like, I can't wait to see those big, beautiful nipples of yours. What? No, I'm so sorry. I meant dimples. My phone changed it. No. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's a stretch. I, I don't ever comment on anyone's dimples. Well, I don't know, man. I, I've definitely, as a man who has dimples, I have definitely commented on people's nipples. So Okay. All right. That's, that's okay. Okay. So far, the other one I still like more, but I so, see what you've done. But you can do the same thing with lots of this. Go get other autocorrect ideas out there, that kind of stuff. That is one style of opener that you can deliver is the autocorrect mismatch laughing one, right? Another style of one is sort of a quick one-liner of some sort. Like I, I used to do, you know, I hope I'm not too tall for you was one of my very consistent ones because I know women like tall guys and yeah. then they'll go check your profile and they'll be like, oh, six, four. That's great. Um, it doesn't work for everybody. I apologize if you are short. I am just one of those things. <laughs> but you could do something similar like that instead of it being, say, like, uh, you know, too tall. But you could do, hey, I want something. I want things to work out between us because I've never been to blank and you could plug in wherever they are have a picture from where they are you know and know you could be my in so if they're at like a club somewhere or if they have a picture at a uh farm you know to table restaurant or something or if they have some sort of something where they've gone somewhere a concert right it's like i want things to work out between us because i've never been to see Justin Timberlake, and I know you could be my in. Like, I don't know, you could throw those kind of things in there and it gives them a little bit of a, oh, this is it's a fun thing. This person read my profile and it's a fun way to, to say instead of like, oh, I like Justin Timberlake too. You know, it's kind of a better, more stylish way of presenting yourself, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. I mean, another thing you said that I really liked about the, the height one was playing to one's strengths and kind of drawing attention to that. So for you, one of your clear strengths is your height. You know, like you said, women are generally attracted to tall guys. And, and then so I'm also playing on the fact that so many women put in their profile, like no short guy or over six four old, and like these kind of things, right? And like yeah. I just, and as a guy, you swipe through it. And it's kind of funny because I see that and I just want to call them out on that because it's kind of, in my way, it's kind of BS to be that qualifying, right? Yeah. But, but they're, but I'm like, you know, I'll call them out on that BS, which is, I think another thing people want from you is that, you know, you call them out on your BS. Like, like I've had, have you ever had a conversation like this, Frank, where you're talking with uh, somebody and they just give you like one word answers or they're kind of like not asking you any questions. So you're kind of carrying the conversation. Yeah. I usually don't end up meeting up with them because I can read that vibe pretty easily, but yes, I know exactly what you're talking about and I'm sure everybody does. <laughs> Sometimes this can break the pattern for them. And they're usually, usually the reason they're doing that is just they're keeping you on hold until they finish, finish conversations with another person they're more interested in. And right. so it's kind of like, they're just like, oh, you're kind of in the backlog of guys, but I don't really want to talk to you. But sometimes you can flip the script if you call them out on that. And so you can say stuff like, uh, my back really hurts. And then they're <laughs> like, really? It's like, yeah, from carrying this conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. You know, yeah. and then they kind of then they kind of sometimes realize like, oh, shit, I need sh I should put some effort in here because this person's obviously con and, and what you're doing there is exuding confidence. Right? I, like the biggest yeah. the biggest deal to any first impression when you're attracting a a a woman usually is confidence. It just mm -hmm. comes down to that. And so the way to exude confidence on text is different like you can't be a dick but you should be confident and have value and so people wasting time of yours can be frustrating so but calling them out in a fun way so they don't feel like oh this person's a dick but more of like oh wow that was kind of clever and funny and yeah they're right yeah i i think there's there's another kind of core concept here which is um doing something that you're comfortable with your strength like you and I were fairly charismatic people. Not everybody's this comfortable having these kinds of conversations or calling people out. And there are ways to get better at that. Um, and I do know of one place that is a really great resource for just getting more comfortable with your timing and delivery and comedy. And one, it's a Charisma on Command. It's a huge YouTube channel. They do a lot of good content and they, they use a lot of like, you know, kind of case studies and give you bullet points for each thing. And and that stuff was really helpful when I first started in sales. 
uh, but more so specifically finding those things that you're good at and, and finding your strengths and highlighting those in a way that's like what you're saying, you know, if, if you know that, okay, because generally just as women generally want taller guys, they also want funny guys. Humor is so key. And I, and I, and I can tell you're going to probably circle back to the whole humor thing at some point here, but humor was something that a woman recently told me is super hard to come by in guys. And at first, like she and I were having great deep intellectual conversations. And then on the third date, she was like, she told me at the end of it that, you know, I was not sure that we would be able to laugh or that you'd be funny. And I'm really relieved that you actually are funny in person. <laughs> I was like, okay, no, that's fair. That's a good roast. But finding finding those strengths and if humor is one of yours or roasting is one of yours, that's usually a common thing that 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 uh, people look for in a partner is the ability to laugh, uh, the ability to make them laugh, which has always made me feel a bit like, am I a jukebox? Am I like on-demand comedy central for you like i don't really like this feeling but finding those ways that you can tailor a conversation to your strength and say oh i hope uh, i hope i don't i hope i don't end up ra uh, roasting you too hard or, or razzing you i don't know if people use razzing mm -hmm. but you know finding the areas that are your strengths and playing to them and making sure that it's like hey i'm shining a light on this quality of mine that i think is really attractive yeah, I think that's important to do for sure. You've got to have, you got to play to your strengths, whatever they are. And I think a lot of guys don't necessarily even know their strengths. And sometimes like, let's talk yeah. a little bit about profiles for a second, because profiles are where you get to exude and show your strengths. And really it is your front page marketing material. And so a lot of profiles are just poorly designed. Like, let me ask you, how many pictures do you keep up, Frank? Well, the apps that I'm on had limit you to six. Mm, I would have that max three pictures. The reason, really? yeah, that the reason is, okay, basically here's the way, here's the experience for a woman, right? She's going through, she sees the first picture. Some swipe, but most people, they, they scroll, right? So they see the first picture and they're like, okay, that's a good picture. She doesn't swipe right on that. Guys, they see a good picture, they swipe right. Yeah. But what, ha what happens is a woman sees a good picture. She's like, let me scroll, read his mm -hmm. profile. Then it's your comedy profile, which should be somewhat funny and real. And then they keep going and it's like, oh, that picture, that's not as good as the first picture. Ooh, that next picture. Basically, you're just the only pic the only thing more pictures can do is give you less of a chance and more of a chance for her. She's trying to look for things that are flags and problems and issues and things she doesn't like. That's what she's doing. So you do not want that many photos. You want three absolutely stunning, amazing, zero flaw photos. Because if you only have one, it's sketchy. If you have two, it's probably not enough. Because again, it's still kind of low. Three is enough to be like, oh, he just doesn't. He he just did three. That's plenty. She's not going to keep going. But if you have five, six, that five and six is usually rarely as good as the first one or the second one or the third one. There's really no point in having a third uh, more than three. Yeah, no, that's fair. I think uh, in that in that vein, it's. One of the things that always bugs me whenever I see on a, on a woman's dating profile is that they put in pictures that are not them. They put in pictures of their animals, which are cute and that's great. But a picture of just your animal is like, OK, well, you use that to show me your dog or cat close up. Like, I don't get that. And then if they do two or like more than one picture of that animal, I'm like, what the hell? Or if it's just like a picture of their shoes. Like when they're like they're some sort of artsy picture of their feet and on cobblestones. I'm like, what is this supposed to be for a guy with a foot fetish? Like, I don't understand. Or Very well it could be Frank. I don't know. It could be or it's Very scenery. Well I'm like, I get that this is a cool photo you like, but I'm not here to date you for your ability to take photos. Or... Do you know what the opening line is for that girl? What? The best opening line for girls who put in photos that are clearly about like, yo, I do things kind of artistic and look at me. I'm more than just my, you know, profile. I'm actually, I'm doing artistic things. I'm a creative, like that's what they're trying to tell you. And so the best thing is to actually acknowledge that usually. And for the, the opener, something around like, I love your aesthetic or, oh, you look so, your profile so cinematic or stuff like that, that kind of compliments the fact that she's trying in that way to show that she's that way you compliment her in that way she says well this guy notices that my aesthetic is cool he's clearly she's wanting that attention for that so acknowledge it and, and give it to her that's a great idea 
That's a that's a great idea. I just uh, I just have a red flag whenever I see too many pictures that aren't that person, and the ones that they have of them are not good. That's just that's my personal peeve. What? Let's talk more about photos, though. Like, what's one of the most important things about a photo? Like, what makes a photo great? I would say I don't know the answer, but I would say it shows all of your face. Um, okay, so yeah, in many ways, that's sort of an answer. Um, let's let's put it this way. <laughs> sort of an answer. I don't know what a full. I don't know what an answer is then. So there's a couple of things. Yes, you do want to have a full face, uh, and the reason why is like no sunglasses. I know a lot of guys they put stuff in there with sunglasses. The problem is, in fact, is your eyes are the most important aspect of all of your photos. Yeah. And the reason and and the way your eyes are and the intensity and the things like that, that's the windows to the soul. That's what people are looking for. And if you uh and by the way, this is not just me spouting this off. I've I've bought I, I've done some research on this for sure. It's not all for me. Like I've bought some courses on this. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was pretty serious about finding good people for a ser for a not insignificant portion of my early 30s. And I wanted to level up the game and the quality of people that I was meeting. And I am with a great partner now. I'm very happy. I've had a series of great partners through my 30s after learning a lot of these techniques. And I think when I say this, people might think, oh, he's just talking. Um, no, I I paid thousands of dollars for various courses on this kind of thing. So I'm not just, and I tested a lot of things. It's a great point actually to qualify ourselves in this yeah. field. I'm glad you brought this up because I wanted to do this as, <laughs> and for myself, I have done online dating for a long time over the last 10 to 12 years. And I've tried OkCupid, Plenty of Fish, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, and, and I've done them multiple times. And uh, definitely have come through it now with a healthy mindset at the end. Like, I feel like it doesn't drive me crazy. And that is an accomplishment. I don't think a lot of people can say that dating apps don't drive them crazy. Yeah. And well, I guess I'll say this is like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm back in the lava life days. Like I started online dating before it was cool because it was not cool to be an online dater. But I remember it was effective when I first started actually using it. And I was like, wow, this is a great way to meet people who actually want to meet me as opposed to, you know, going up to someone and they already have a boyfriend or like having to yeah. work up the core, the courage to go talk to someone in a group, right? Like there's a lot of things like that, that make it a barrier in person. And so online dating was for me, an introvert, a nerd, someone who was, you know, at home chill. And I was like, I can work towards meeting someone quite easily, but I moved into various other platforms as I was single at various times in my life. And so I've used everything from Tinder to Bumble to Hinge to Plenty of Fish way back in the day, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Yeah. But I, and I've also had a series of great, very successful relationships. And the one I'm in right now is amazing. And so let's talk about photos. Why am I saying eyes? The reason is because based on various uh, researches that were done in the programs that I've bought, uh, eyes are the most indicative thing of your personality, of who you are and how you look. And so there's some like re really important things to consider about your, your, your photos. There's actually a way in which to almost squint your eyes that makes you look more attractive. It is hard to describe, but the best way I have to test your photos is actually a website called Photo Feeler. It's a photo, but a photo feeler, exactly how it sounds, photofeeler.com. And you can test your photos and get ratings from people on which is the most attractive and which is the best photo. Because a lot of guys think a photo is great and it's terrible. And in fact, it's like you might think these are so attractive, these are so good, and they're actually terrible. And in fact, one of the best ways you can go out and get great photos is hire a photographer, go out and get a thousand shots in one day have three or four different outfits. It might cost you a hundred and 150 bucks or something like that to get a bunch of shots from them. And out of that thousand shots that they do in those various outfits, various locations, various things that you're doing, you'll get like three great photos, maybe 10, but you'll pick the top three. And then you test all of them on photo feeler, figure out which one is the absolute best. And that's the ones you use on your profile. Cause you know what? It's not about being a model, by the way, a lot of people think like, Oh, I've got to be a model. I've got to be, here's my washboard abs. And here's my, here are my guns. I don't wear sleeves. You know, like it's, right. it's, that doesn't matter actually nearly as much as can I see this guy's eyes? How does he look like he's a really fun, awesome person? That's it. Like high value person, fun person, like that's what's attractive. 
Well, the criticism that comes to mind around this idea, as much as I like it, is that it it sounds like it would look like you're trying really hard. And I get that we are trying hard, but a part of the balance is showing that, hey, I'm also super chill and easygoing about all of this. And I and I have great pictures of me doing activities and things with people. And this starts to sound like, I mean, it's kind of, I feel like for me, I would be embarrassed if I said, hey, I hired a photographer for these photos that I put well, up here. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't necessarily have to say you hired a photographer, but if they ask, you can tell them. But they won't ask; they won't care about that. They they care that you. And all I would say is, if you sure. did hire a photographer, that only makes you more attractive. The reason you did it is because, like, I'm serious about finding someone awesome, and I don't have time to be waiting around figuring this shit out. Yeah, I mean, when you sit when someone says it like that, it's the confidence good. in my decision is that I do this because I wanted to meet you and you're dope. So let's like get over that and move forward. <laughs> you know, like it really doesn't make sense if someone's going to judge me for that. That's a man taking his relationship and his uh, pursuit of a woman seriously, which is attractive, not no, you're not true. Attractive. I mean, that's right. That's right. That's totally and right. in a smart way, it's not a dumb thing to do. A lot of other guys are dumb about this which is why i'm bringing this out for free hopefully some of you will be way better at this after listening to this podcast and maybe you don't even maybe you don't even need it maybe you could just tell your single friends and help them out by recommending this over to them because everyone knows some single friends and we can help those people yeah photo feeler okay that's cool one of the things that i wanted to add before we jump into the next section and i'm and i'm excited for you to talk about descriptions and things but one of the things i wanted to talk about is kind of mindset around this for me, I find that it's it's been really helpful over the years to remember that these are actually like most of the time, they're actually people on the other end. And not only does that mean being kind and respectful, but it also means recognizing that if they don't respond, it's not because they think you're weird or have something in your teeth. It's more likely that their life just got so busy and in the way that they can't prioritize this right now. Or, or they found means, someone. Exactly. Or it means they found someone and be happy for them because you probably aren't that it's invested. Not, they found that. Frank. That's what happened. Yeah, it's uh, because I came it's, along. It's, and, he came uh, along. It's, if, if you can't get the lady you want, trust me, Frank's already there. He's using all these <laughs> tactics. <laughs> not everybody can get Frank. All right. Well, but. yeah. And so <laughs> making sure to have that mindset that, uh, you know, they are going to be, there's, they're going to have totally valid reasons and that their life is going to be busy. That has helped me a lot because I used to stress out a lot about, oh my gosh, when are they going to text me back? When are they going to message me? I hope they meet up. I hope they're real. And I hope that, 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 that we hit things off because they're super hot or whatever. But once I recognize, you know what, it's all going to be fine. I will find happiness one way or another. It'll be okay. And I'll say this too, is that, you know, I did sales for many, many years. As many of you who listen to the podcast know, I was a salesperson for over 13 years of my life. And I still do sales in some capacity, but I was like a hardcore get in the door kind of salesperson, you know, like I faced rejection on a regular basis and I taught people how to face rejection and overcome obstacles in a very strong, mentally, mentally tough way uh, for a long time. And I will say that that helps in online dating because the way I looked at it was as a numbers game. It's not that these people were numbers, they're people. But understanding that there's always going to be a percentage of the people you talk to that are not going to respond. And the reason why is because of the things Frank just mentioned. Also, you have people that are going to respond that just don't really gel and you don't even want to meet them and they don't want to meet you. And then after that, you have a percentage of people that you want to meet with them and they want to meet with you and then you meet them and it doesn't work out. And then there's going to be a percentage of people that you want to meet with them. They want to meet with you. And when you meet with them, they're cool until you learn more about them. And then they're not cool. And yeah. then by the end of the date, you're going to be like, I am so glad we figured out this now. And then there's going to be like, so the point I'm trying to make is there's all these little percentages and all those stories are true. All those stories are going to happen. It's just whether, are they going to happen in a week for you because you put in the effort and you got that many responses and you got a lot of dates done so that you can get to the one person out of the seven dates you did that week that actually is good and actually is someone you want to meet and do a second date with like dating is hard work. 
And it's a job on the side. It's like having a part-time job, finding a relationship. And I guess I treated it like if this is a numbers game, much like a sale, like to me, I have one awesome $2,000, $1,000 sale out there. And I just don't know which of the next 10 or 15 appointments it's going to be. But I know in 10 or 15, I'm going to get a $1,000, $2,000 sale. That's the way I treated sales. And so it was mostly just about getting the 15 appointments. And I think if you go to dating... And acknowledging that it's going to be a bit of a frustrating process and that it's part of what it is. You have to surrender to that fact, but then you can find ways to enjoy it. Then you can find ways to be like, whew, glad I got that one out of the way. This is someone I'm not going to have to meet anymore. Right. No, they, they didn't respond. Quickest date ever. Awesome. Done. Right. Like <laughs> that. It's easier to get past that to the point where you're like, okay, this person I'm meeting, I'm excited about it. And then you actually get to meet them and they're dope and they're awesome. And you're like, wow, we get along really well. I would really like to meet this person again. And then you actually wind up and, and you know what? There's going to be some that you meet. You want to meet them again. They don't want to meet you. But then there's going to be a person that you meet. That person is that $1,000, $2,000 sale. Doesn't happen every time. It happens though. And you have to just get enough numbers in to get to that person. It's unfortunate that is the dating game. That's how dating works now. But it is a numbers game. So as much as we want to treat people as people and be kind and be real about it, we also need to acknowledge that you're going to have a lot of failure in this process. And you have to embrace that as someone moving forward into success. And it's a numbers game. Hey, Nerdpreneurs, if you're enjoying these dating tips and want to go even deeper with this subject, consider becoming a member of our awesome Nerdpreneur Board. Board members get full versions of all our episodes, but for this episode, Frank and I talk for another 52 minutes about online dating. During that, I cover exactly what to say in your dating profile description to get more responses, more of my best opening lines and conversation starters, how to cultivate a mindset that is magnetic and attractive how to move people off the app to an actual date, resetting your dating app algorithm, and I'm even taking screenshots of my old dating profiles and sharing them with our board members. Board members can also send us follow-up questions to any of the topics from our episodes, and we love our board members to death. We wouldn't be able to keep making this content without them. So go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur to sign up to be a board member today. I'll link it in the show notes. Thanks again for listening. Now let's get back to the episode. There's more good stuff coming. So covered a lot of stuff in this, Chris. And yeah, I have this will have to be this will have to have some gated com- stuff too. But um, yeah, if people are listening to this all the way through and you're one of our patrons, um, maybe you're single, maybe you're not. I don't know. <laughs> Tell, like I said, recommend our podcast to some single friends. That's an awesome way to help them out. Um, and ideally, this has been valuable of some uh, value to you in some way. It's scratching the surface of kind of decades of research and trial and error and messing it up and, you know, paying for courses and doing things like I've done a lot of things, a lot of work in this area. And so I do feel like I can bring a lot of ideas that maybe you wouldn't normally be exposed to and try to keep it in a real, a real way for you to actually say like, okay, I'm not trying to change you. I'm not trying to make you into a pickup artist. I just want you to play your best game, you know? And I want you to have the best results for what you're offering. And there are ways, as I've mentioned, to optimize your results, which is just meeting more people, meeting better people for you, and having a lot more fun while you're doing it versus frustrations, which is what I think a lot of people experience when they're going through these dating app experiences. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of want to double down on what you said. However, I mean, the use of game is a tricky word. I know what you mean when you say it. And and I'm just going to clarify that it's not the game of tricking people. It's the game of, you know, there's an algorithm that you have to work with. It's, It's not a human. And people are predictable. Yes. It's not that it's always going to work every time, but I can generally, with the right tactics help people give themselves a better shot at getting success you know that's the way i look at it because you know if if things aren't working it's rarely because you suck do you know what i mean like i just don't want guys out there to be thinking that this 
dating app and how well I'm doing on it is really because I'm not attractive and I'm not awesome and my validation comes from this thing called the swipe and because I don't get the matches or and the reality is that I don't think that's the case. I've taught right. friends who are of all different shapes and sizes and 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 levels of 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 handsome, I guess you could say, and had them improve their results through just a few tweaks. It doesn't have to be self-identity. Now you're starting to sound salesy, which I, I know it's true what you're saying, but you know, I see the salesman Chris a little bit just shy just a little bit <laughs> well i just i don't want it to seem like oh man this is, you have you have to do all these tactical things and it's sleazy because it's really not sleazy if you're a good person do you know what i'm yeah. saying like yeah. if your it's objective is not to just go and sleep with every single woman you possibly can and like trick women and like that's not what i'm doing this for yeah. i'm doing this so that the guy who's struggling to to get results, knows he has value, knows he has uh, a, a good heart and is actually wanting to meet someone who's great. That's the guy who needs the help from the marketing perspective of like, why isn't this working? It's not because you suck. It's not because you're not awesome. It's because you have a marketing problem. Just like I would if a business has a great product, but they have no good marketing. I would come in there as a salesperson or as a marketer and help that business get results, which is getting their product in front of more people that could potentially buy it and giving them the best possible way of looking at it. And that's actually smart. That's not manipulative, that's not bad. You're putting out your best possible product to your profile, which is what everybody should be doing. And I'm showing you some of the tactics that are more effective for doing this than not. Totally agree. One last thing thought that I had was about being polite in the beginning. Like, I think there is kind of a misconception around the, uh, when you first are meeting somebody or when you're first trying to meet someone, sometimes people think I'm going to be my authentic self and I'm going to, you know, put very little effort in. But in reality, like we're all trying to impress the other person on that first date. Be yourself, be your authentic self, but also recognize that in the beginning, it's important to be polite, you know, be your most polite self in the beginning because you want to show like this is the peak this is like some of the pinnacle of my, you know, personality and my capability as, as a partner. Um, but at the same time, I think it should be understood that each, each you know, it's not, it's not going to be like that forever because we always kind of have this first impression that we put up. Yeah. Well, I think also it's, it's actually, it's okay to be a little bit polarizing though, too. Because yeah, it, sure. you'd, you'd rather have, I, I would rather have less people really like you than try to get everybody kind of like you, you know? Oh, like, absolutely. I like, think that, you know, depending on the topics too, you're going to polarize people. I think you want to be respectful. And obviously that's, that's important because it's a qualifier for just dealing with anybody. You know, if you're shopping at a store, you have to be respectful. If you're ordering from a restaurant, you have to be respectful. If you're yeah. talking to a woman on an app, you should be respectful. It's important to, to bring that to wherever you are because you're a respectful person. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to change who you are or agree with everything someone says. You can challenge people. You can move, um, you know, in an authentic way through this experience. And that can be attractive. Yeah. That authenticity is really important. And yeah, that respect is important. And I bring it up because, you know, sometimes I hear people say like, oh, I was just being myself when I met them and and they didn't like it. And and then you hear the story and it's like, wow, you actually were kind of a dick. Like yeah, the way well, you maybe, went about maybe it. Maybe yourself is a bit of a douche, right? Like, yeah, maybe your maybe, natural self is a douche. <laughs> yeah. And some people aren't aware of that way. I mean, we're probably, I'm, I've been a douchebag probably multiple times in this conversation. Uh, but <laughs> it's never, I've never been one. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, but I think there is a, there is a level of, of, uh, respect that you know i think you'll learn as you go through this process as well and hey if you got questions email them at nerds at nerdpreneurpodcast.com maybe we'll be able to do a q a on this kind of stuff in the future especially for patrons or people like that we can do some of this stuff so if you have questions or you'd like to go deeper on the topic reach out to us over instagram at nerdpreneur podcast or tweet us at nerdpreneur pod on twitter if uh you want to be on that platform so <laughs> if you want to <laughs> nowadays want, nowadays no I, I don't i don't know i 
I have I, I think it's just funny because Twitter has become its own joke just by saying <laughs> on Twitter. Um, but all I'm saying is, yeah, if you want to if you have questions, if you want to go deeper on any of these subjects or if you want some help, uh, we're here as resources. I'm happy to uh, to reach out and maybe we can put something together for people. If you want to get dating advice from two nerds. And if you uh, <laughs> think this was terrible, let us know that. And uh, you'll never hear from us talking about d- dating, dating ever advice again. again. <laughs> Maybe it may. What if our market is all women and this is just like going to tank our audience? Like, what if we only have women listening to us right now and they're like, these two guys, what fucking wow. guzzy bastards what? they are? Yeah, what the fuck do they think they're doing? Giving advice to men? Oh, God, they're just making this even worse for us women out here. As everybody knows, this talking nerdy is over. So, what do we say? Keep it nerdy. You just finished the free version of this Talkin' Nerdy episode. For another 52 minutes of tips and strategies on online dating, go to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur and sign up to be a member of the Awesome Nerdpreneur Board. Thanks again for listening and tell your single friends to check out this episode. Keep it nerdy.